So we'll survey the later diverging fungi now. So one of the first of the group is the glomeromycota. This is actually more commonly referred to as the AM fungi or ibuscular mycorrhizal fungi. So remember, these are the ones that are living um, in the roots of plants always. So they're always living with plant partners. They're aseptate. They only reproduce asexually. So they do not carry out sexual reproduction. And as I mentioned before, this particular group actually may have been super important to early plants that moved onto land. Um, they needed the fungi to help them access nutrients in water before there was substantial soils. So fungi may have been critical in the development of substantial soils that later plants would rely on. And that's the glomeromycota, so not a lot to say about them. So ascomycetes, um, also more commonly referred to as ascomycota. So you'll see both of those terms. Um, they have septa dividing their cells. Um, and then they have unique sporangia in their sexual life cycle called asci. Um, and they produce sexual spores called ascospores. Ascospores, asci, and their fruiting bodies are called ascocarps. So notice that their sexual structures all use this same root asco, um, making it hopefully relatively easy to memorize the relationship between these um, structures and the phylum they belong to. We see these um, ascomycota in terrestrial and aquatic land habitats. They include a lot of different fungi, including some deep a lot of decomposers, and some well-known plant pathogens. Um, powdery mildews, chestnut blight, Dutch elm disease, and apple scab are just a couple of examples. Um, powdery mildew is a common problem on zucchini, um, so it's like a white powder on zucchini or pumpkins. Um, it can also affect like tomatoes and peppers as well. Chestnut blight and Dutch elm disease are both diseases that have had major impacts on tree populations. Chestnut blight was transported to the United States from Asia and was a fungal disease that actually killed off American chestnut trees. Um, the Chinese chestnut trees in Asia were had some immunity to the disease, and so they were able to survive with it. But when it came to the United States, it caused the extinction of the American chestnut. Dutch elm disease is currently spreading across the United States and killing off elm trees um, throughout major parts of the United States. And then apple scab is a big problem um, for apple growers, and it, it causes a little um, unsightly little piece on the skin. Um, if you've eaten organic apples, you've probably seen them on organic apples, and we'll see a picture of those later. Um, but first, let's take a look at their life cycle. Um, so they can asexually reproduce. So like other fungi, they can simply use mitosis to grow a structure and um, drop spores. Um, these are conidia or conidia spores when they're produced asexually. There's no fusion, no diploid stage. They're always haploid and the, the um, offspring are identical to the parent. However, um, they can also sexually reproduce. So again, remember that in with fungi, we're going to see a fusion of two different mating types. So red and blue or plus minus. And so we see fusion of the nucleus, um, or sorry, excuse me, fusion of the cytoplasm, but not of the nucleus. And so you see cells that contain both the red and blue nucleus unfused. And so this starts to grow into dikaryotic or heterokaryotic mycelium. This will become the fruiting body. So this will grow into, just with mitosis, the fruiting body of the fungi and what that looks like will vary, okay? So it can be a potentially very large structure that's the fruiting body and within each one of the cells, you have these two separate nuclei. In certain regions of that fruiting body called the ascocarp, so in ascomycota, the fruiting body is called the ascocarp. At the tips of this um, mycelium, there is a special cell called an ascus or asci for plural. So these are uh, the, an, an ascus right here, okay? And at first there's the two separate nuclei, but within the asci you get nuclear fusion. So the nuclei fuse in the asci, these, these special cells. So now we have a diploid nucleus inside of the asci that nucleus will go through meiosis. So notice we now have four different nuclei inside of this cell. 
they're haploid because they went through meiosis. And then interestingly, and this is special to the ascomycota, they'll do one round of mitosis. And so now they have eight nuclei inside of this um, ascus cell, okay? And then each one of these will be released from the ascus. So these nuclei are the ascospores and the fruiting body will somehow release it. So in this case, it's puffing out of the fruiting body and the things that are puffing out are those ascospores coming out of the asci. Okay, so to recap, we get fusion of the hyphal branches that produces um, uh, the only the fused cytoplasm, separate nuclei. They keep dividing while maintaining those separate nuclei um, and that grows into it, the ascocarp or fruiting body. In some parts of the fruiting body at tips, you have these special cells called asci. It's inside of the asci that the nuclei finally fuse. That fused diploid nucleus then goes through meiosis to produce four haploid spores. One round of mitosis creates four haploid spores. These are now the ascospores that will be released by the fruiting body. And that's the sexual life cycle of ascomycota. So again, I mentioned several examples of the pathogens. This is what an apple scab looks like. So again, this is a fungal pathogen growing on an apple. Um, uh, the ascomycota are common fungi that are engaged or involved in lichen partnerships. Um, some edible ascomycotas include truffles and morels. Um, truffles are a European native, so um, a very valuable commodity. They never figured out how to grow them in like a farming type situation, and so they have to be wild collected. And so they are very, very, very expensive. Morels um, do grow here in the United States in specific areas. They grow in the Colorado mountains, they grow in the south, um, also are wild collected. Um, and then we have several yeasts that belong to this group as well. So baking and brewing yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is the scientific name of most of the baking and brewing yeasts. Um, and then candida, which is that human pathogen, also belongs to that group. And this is a picture of a, of a truffle, if you've never seen one. They're very um, plain looking, um, hard to believe that people pay hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars to eat them, um, but they do for their, I guess, unique flavor. Uh, I've never eaten one myself. I've only ever had truffle oil, <laughs> which is a much more affordable way to taste truffles. Okay, so last fungal group is Basidiomycota. Um, so these also have septa, so that remember the cross walls dividing them. Um, Ascomycota and Basidiomycota are the most recently evolved groups of fungi. Um, they're important decomposers and mycorrhizal partners. Um, and when you think mushroom, this is what you're thinking of. So mushrooms belong to this group. Puffballs, this is a puffball. These grow in Colorado. Um, when they're soft, they're edible. Um, they'll dry out and then they're, they're not edible. But um, stinkhorns I mentioned before, these grow around the town. Shell fungi grow out of tree trunks. And then a lot of the rust and smuts that affect plants um, are in this group as well. Okay, so um, we're going to see kind of like with ascomycota that they have a lot of different um, structures that relate to their name, basidiomycota. So they're gonna have a basidium that produces sexual spores called basidiospores, and their fruiting body is called a basidiocarp. Um, and so that's gonna be their sexual cycle. And then they also can reproduce asexually, depending on the type of, um, of fungus in Basidiomycota. They, their spores produced this way have various names. These are a couple more pictures of members of Basidiomycota. This is a shelf fungi, so there's the tree trunk. Here's the fruiting body growing out of the tree trunk. Um, this is what's called corn smut. Um, there's the corn. You can see the corn there. This is the the in the husk of the corn. And then this is a very advanced fruiting body growing out of the corn. Um, so this part here um, is the fungus. Um, so corn growers typically don't like corn smut growing on their corn because it is obviously affecting the corn kernel production, but it's actually become somewhat of a, a, a you know, fancy restaurant type thing. Um, 
it's traditionally eaten in like Mexico and places that traditionally grew corn for a long time um, and sort of moved from there to like, like I said, like really fancy restaurants in the United States. You can now eat corn smut. They have a fancier name for it that it doesn't sound as gross as corn smut. I have eaten this because it grew on my corn one time uh, and it basically tastes like a mushroom. Okay, so let's take a look at the um, Basidio micata life cycle. Um, so let's go where we always start. Here's fusion of the hyphal branches. So if we have fusion of the hyphal branches, um, remember that is going to only fuse the uh, cytoplasm. So we keep our, um, our nuclei separate. And then once we have the fused cell, um, it goes through mitosis and is going to grow into, again, a multikaryotic or dikaryotic um, uh, uh, fruiting body. So, and this is just showing because of the way that it divides, because it puts a cross wall after mitosis, if it just put a cross wall here, it would end up with cells that had two blue and two red instead of one blue, one red. So it has this extra step where it has to transfer the nucleus um, to make sure that each new cell ends up with one blue and one red one. So that's the, kind of this extra step here because it has the septae. Um, so that's all mitosis and distribution of the nuclei is happening in order to grow, again, this dikaryotic mycelium. So here's our dikaryotic mycelium. Again, this is the fruiting body. And in this case, it's called a basidiocarp. And then within certain parts of the basidiocarp, and so in a mushroom, this is typically in the gills, you have special cells called basidia. So these cells along here are the basidia. They're along the edge in the gills of mushrooms or in other places depending on the type of basidiomycota member. Um, and it's within those basidia that again you get nuclear fusion. So now we have instead of two nuclei, we have a fused nuclei. And then within these, uh, the basidia cells, it's going to go through meiosis, and now we have four haploid spores. These are called basidiospores, and these are what are released to produce new mycelia. Okay, so one more time. We have our two nuclei um, that come together into one cell after fusion of the two different mating types, hypha. They grow, the cells now begin to divide. They go through mitosis and have this extra step where they um, rearrange the nuclei to make sure that every new cell gets one red one and red blue, one blue one. And that's growing a fruiting body called a basidiocarp. As the basidiocarp forms, there's areas of it um, that are sometimes called gills or pores, depending on the type of, of, fun of, of fungus that we're looking at. And along those regions of the fruiting body, there will be cells called basidia. One, the cells in the basidia will go through nuclear fusion. So the two separate nuclei now fuse, produce a single diploid nucleus. The diploid, diploid nucleus then goes through meiosis, produces four haploid nuclei that will become the four unique basidiospores. These are now unique, different from the parents, and will go out and form new mycelia. And that's the sexual life cycle of basidiomycota. All right, so that is fungi in a nutshell.